Law Warrior Online Double Feature The Turkina Overview Clan Jade Falcon uses the massive jump capable assault omnimech named the Turkina in situations other clans might address with a direwolf. The addition of jump jets as standard equipment marks this omnimech as unique among the clans. The clans build few jump capable mechs, instead taking advantage of the omnimech's modular nature to add jump jets when required by the current mission and configuring extra weapons when jump jets are not necessary. The most plausible explanation for this radical departure from standard design parameter is that the younger mech warriors find themselves overwhelmed by the panoply of choice that they confront in mech training. While most Inner Sphere warriors stay with one type of mech for most of their careers, clan warriors must face the task of mastering what is effectively an infinite variety of systems. To misquote an old saying, clan warriors possess the potential to become jacks of all trades and masters of none. On the homeworlds, the SIBCO training regime was rigorous enough to ensure that graduates could rise to the challenge and still maintain their edge. In the Jade Falcon clan, it seems that the losses suffered at battles such as Tukid and the Refusal War have forced the clan to relax their previously strict standards in this matter and allow new cadets to gain the benefits of a certain level of standardization. The Turkina may represent a minor concession to the need for clan mech warriors to spend more training time in a standard platform. Capabilities the most common configuration of the Turkina is equipped with two racks of long-range missile launchers, two LBX-class autocannon, and two improved PPCs. This flexible mix of weapon systems gives the Turkina exactly twice the punch packed by the primary configuration of the Thor, and adds just more than 40% of its weight. For situations likely to result in long-range engagements, the first alternate configuration carries two Gauss rifles and two massive racks of LRMs. Configuration B of the Turkina demonstrates that the clans learned from their defeat on Tukid and other planets. The extended campaigns of the clans fought on Tukid placed great stresses on ammo resupply efforts, and in those 30 terrible days, many clan units found their firepower significantly reduced through the failure of their supply system to provide them with sufficient ammo. Rather than beef up their logistics, the clans now field more mechs equipped solely with energy weapons. The Turkina B mounts all laser weaponry, combined with a deadly accurate targeting computer. The Turkina C represents another lesson learned from the ongoing struggle between the clans and the people of the Inner Sphere, as this mech is configured for close in city fighting against swarms of infantry, both standard and power suit equipped. Deployment Current reports show the Turkina to be deployed only within the Jade Falcon clan, though early reports claimed that Smoke Jaguar units were also using this mech. 3058 Upgrade Overview Entering service in the wake of the Refusal War, the slow and lumbering 95-ton Turkina is the Jade Falcon's principal assault Omnimech. It occupies the same niche as the Daishi, but has quickly superseded the design in the Falcon's ranks. Capabilities Unusually for a modular design, the Turkina features integral jump jets, usual as a configuration-specific equipment. This allows the mech to jump 90 meters at a bound. This helps offset the poor maneuverability of the wide, squat design, allowing it to overcome obstacles and reposition itself quickly. This unusual design decision helped simplify logistics within the clan at a time when its resources were stretched thin, but has proven to be popular with pilots. Massively armoured and with 42 tons of pod space, the Turkina is resilient and packs a fearsome punch. Its configurations reflect a range of combat roles and philosophies including long-range fire support, close in brawling, and city fighting. Some of the standard configurations rely heavily on ammunition and thus a logistics chain, while others are designed specifically to counter the resupply issues that plague the Tukid campaign. Two factories exist for the Turkina, one in clan space and the second in the Inner Sphere, but while both source many components locally, the models produced in the plants are functionally identical. However, a level of prejudice has arisen among Falcon Trueborns, against the Sudeten-built models, claiming that they are inferior. Deployment The Jade Falcons initially attempted to maintain a solid grip on the Turkina design and retain the sole manufacturing plants for it, but the last decade has seen a slow dissemination of the design throughout the Kerensky Exiles. Smoke Jaguar operated a handful of the design, all of which fell into the hands of the SLDF and are now operated by the Novacats, or those who uh, dismembered the Jaguar holdings. 
Other clans, like the Cloud Cobras, Coyotes, and Fire Mandrels, traded with the Falcons for the design or otherwise took them as spoils of war in the escalating series of clashes in the homeworlds. Notable Mech Warriors Star Commander Jan. A freeborn warrior, Jan was an unusual choice for a frontline galaxy in the hidebound Falcons, but his combination of skill and charisma, and the shortage of skilled warriors in the wake of the Refusal War, have made him a natural leader for the glut of new recruits entering the Talman. When his trinary was assigned a Sudaten built Turkina, many of the Trueborn warriors balked at piloting the inferior design, and so it fell to Jan to wield it in battle, which he does efficiently and lethally. Star Colonel Kate. Only 16 when she tested out in the bloody carnage of Coventry, Kate's skill and determination have allowed her to rise through the ranks, becoming Star Colonel when she was 24. Unable to rise further due to her status as a freeborn, the Khans nonetheless recognised her skill and contribution to the clan, assigning her a clan space built Turkina. So, it's a 95 ton chassis JF standard, Jade Falcon standard. Power plant 285 Jade Falcon Extra Light, cruise speed of 32, back speed of 54 kph, with its three Jade Falcon standard jump jets, standard uh, jump capacity of 90 meters, and the armor is, you guessed it, Jade Falcon standard. Armament is 42 tons of pod space, and it's manufactured by Complex Beta or Olivetti Weapons, either on Ironhold in the clan space or Sudaten in the captured in the sphere space. Communication system is a Jade Falcon integrated, and its targeting and tracking systems are Series Jade Falcon 9 Olivetti Pinpoint Advanced, depending on where it's built. This translates into an assault mech that has a walk of 3, a run of 5, a jump of 3, it has 30 heat dissipation via its 15 double heat sinks, and its armour is 9 on the head, 45 on the CT with 10 on the rear, 30 on the right and left torso, 10 on the rear, and 32 on the arms, and 40 on the legs. It's a big old beast and I love it. <laughs> Always like the Turkina, and the new the redesign of it I think is fantastic visually, it's just, it's so unique and weird and... Dumpy. I, I I just I really like it. The, the original artwork I didn't mind, and I really do like the the new design, which will be in this video probably around about this point. Um, but yeah, uh, primary configuration is twin ER PPCs, uh, two in the right arm, with extra double heat sinks. Its right torso has its LRM15 with eight uh, rounds of ammo. It two LBX5s in the left arm with 40 shots split between them, an LRM15 in the left torso with 16 rounds of fire, and extra double heat sinks in the legs. So. It's, you know, quite an easy split of uh, weaponry um, with the two ERs in the right arm and the two LBs in the left arm, and then you've got your, your missiles in the side torsos of extra heat sinks where needed. Alternate configuration A puts a Gauss rifle in the right arm with 16 shots, an LRM20 in the right torso with the ammo, strangely enough, in the arm, the right arm, uh, with more ammo also in the right torso, so about 12 shots there for that launcher. It has another Gauss rifle in the left arm and then mirrored across for the LRM20 in the other torso. The alternate configuration B is two ER large lasers in the right arm with a double heat sink and a targeting computer. ER medium laser in the right torso with two double heat sinks. Uh, the left arm has two large pulse lasers and three double heat sinks. The left torso has an ER medium laser and the left torso has two extra double heat sinks. The head has a medium pulse laser as does the CT and then extra double heat sinks are placed throughout the legs. Alternate configuration C brings a pair of large pulses in, in the right arm with extra heat sinks, a streak 6 in the right torso with two machine guns and ammo, the LB, an LBX 20 in the left arm with five rounds of ammo, the left torso has two medium pulse lasers with extra 15 rounds of ammo, the head has an active probe, and the CT has the ammo for the street launcher with 15 shots. It also has A pods in both legs, and flamers uh, are also leg mounted. D configuration is two ATM 12s, one in uh, sorry, two ATM 12s with the right arm and two ATM 12s in the left arm with 25 shots each, and a set of ER medium lasers, uh, one in the head and one in the CT, and then extra heat sinks in the legs. So pretty straightforward build. And the H configuration is a heavy medium laser in the right arm with a double heat sink and targeting computer, the, an ultra 10 in the right torso with 10 shots of ammo. Two heavy medium lasers in the left arm with extra heat sinks and ammo for the ultra 20. Yeah, ult yeah, an extra 20 shots in the left arm. The ammo and stuff is all over the place on these things. An ultra 10 in the left torso with an extra 10 shots. And then pulse lasers, uh, one in the head, one in the CT with extra double heat sinks. So, um, although the configuration of loadout uh, where all the weaponry is placed is a bit weird, it is a frighteningly deadly mech. Um, it's so unique looking. I'll give it that. It's. 
definitely one of the better looking assault mechs that came out of uh, some of the later designs for the clans. I do like the fact that it was. Um, I do. I also like the fact that it is pretty much a Jade Falcon design. The later book does write yes that some of these designs did end up in some of the other uh, clan holdings, but you can imagine that these are like a handful at most. A vast majority of them are a Jade Falcon design, and I like the fact that the fal that some of the clans have their own thing. It, you know, it helps distinguish them a bit more. And the Turkina is a great example of such. Um, definitely one of those mechs that uh, if a player gets hold of it, they're going to be happy. Uh, if a player comes up against it, they're going to be sad. Um, it's uh, a very versatile design, very deadly, 95 ton, lots of armor spread across it. And the yeah rather unnerving ability for it to quickly hop over a hill or jump into cover if it needs to if there's some you know if a unit tries to get behind it it can you know make a little maneuver it might not be able to hit in return but it can keep itself safe protect that uh, that soft uh, rear section of the mech uh it's got a lot of versatility to it given its weight class and yeah it's uh, able even the the primary configuration is more than capable of engaging at range keeping you pinned down before it gets in close with its lbs I can still hit you with the uh, you know the ERPPCs at point blank, so it could do a lot of damage. And the heat dissipation at thirty means it can at least fire a bunch of its weapons without worrying about overheat each turn. So quite effective, quite fun. But uh, I'll leave it there. I've uh, I've rambled about the Turkina enough, as I believe this is the last mech of thirty fifty eight. Uh, the rest are just the vehicles uh, to cover in there. And uh, before I uh, move on to uh, greener pastures and technical readouts, we're, we're getting up there. We're finishing them. But I do have plans for other parts of Law Road, don't worry. Um, still units to cover, there's still other TROs to cover, and there's warships, uh, civilian vehicles, obviously, and um, obviously power armors and stuff to cover. And then we've got uh, some more, obviously, a lot more vehicles. And I'll probably be going back to older Law Warriors at some point, but rather than just reading the books and me rambling about them afterwards, I've got an idea of some, doing something a little bit different. Might take a bit longer, but more a longer form kind of thing. Um, God knows what I'll do for in terms of art or anything like that. I'm, I might just have it be a kind of thing where you, you know you put it on in the background while you're painting models or driving or just doing some monotonous work. You can have my monotonous voice in the background just to make you fall asleep. So uh, until then, have a good one, everybody. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. With all this lovely rain that's going on around me, oh, it's so nice. Have you heard any of that in the background? Uh, apologies if that was a little distracting, but uh, I can't pass up the opportunity to not have. Uh, the windows and the door open here, just listening to this rain just, just pour on in. It's great. Anyway, have a good one. Thanks again. Bye.